Hiya, been uh, quite a while since I last did a video. Those of you who have subscribed to my channel know that I've sort of spent the uh, last almost year restoring a Triumph TR6 which is now finally gone. But that stayed around, it weren't easy to sell. Classic cars are not easy to sell at the moment, not in this current climate. Anyway, so I've been kind of at a loose end and not knowing what to do with my time. In the meanwhile, I've taken up drawing. I actually found that I'm pretty good at it using some of the YouTube tutorials that I've uh, been watching out there. Um, so yeah, I've been doing a bit of that for now, but didn't feel it was worth uploading videos of me trying to draw. But those of you who have seen the thumbnail already know what I'm about to embark on, which is this. So what I've got here is the AliExpress version of Lego's Titanic. It only arrived today. In fact, this was a gift to me from my brother who's just completed it and said it was so much fun putting it together. I decided to buy you one as well. So uh, let's get this open. So there are in amongst all of these bags a total of 9,090 individual parts. Which is exactly the same amount as the original Lego kit has got. This measures at 135 centimeters once it's finished, which is huge which is again, is the same size as the Lego version. The main difference being is this, that um, this doesn't come in the original Lego box. It just came in that cardboard box with these bags inside, as you've seen. There was an option where you could have a hard copy set of instructions for an extra 16 pound, I can't remember, something like that, or a PDF version. My brother built it with a PDF version, said it was much better because you could zoom in you know put it on your tablet and zoom in and look at the parts in more detail or the bits that you've got constructed in more detail the biggest difference is this this kit from lego at the moment and i'm looking even on ebay i'm seeing them for about 700 quid which is a lot of money to invest and not a lot of people would want to invest in that kind of money for what is effectively just a little hobby a pastime but from AliExpress, this came in at, I think it's about 115 quid, something like that, delivered. Fantastic value. My brother's finished his one, and uh, I've been to see it today when I went to go and pick up the box from him. The model is amazing. The detail is unbelievable. And as I say, you know, for, for around 100 odd quid, you don't mind spending that for like a little hobby, which is going to take up quite a lot of your time and you're going to get a lot of pleasure but it's you know around 700 quid mm, you make a very nice uh, Christmas present for an old granddad like me but I, I couldn't accept it if someone had spent 700 quid on it for me so um, the idea is I'm going to try to put this all together in one video which means lots of fast editing and um, occasionally maybe stop to speak and say what's going on i don't know how long this video will eventually end up being until i've kind of finished it but i'm anticipating on spending around a month on this although those that know me you know that i get a bit obsessive and i'll probably finish it by tomorrow morning right i've had a little organizing session here and put these big bags in order so we, what we've got basically is 15 large bags like this so number one two three up or up to 15 and within each bag you've got a number of little bags now so just to give you an idea you can see if this shows up on camera very well i can see right within this bag it says there eight number one so that's that little bag inside there and i'll just show you so 
if I open up this bag here for our thing, let's say, and entered it out, apart from the odd bit here and there falling out, I don't know why. Anyway, so you've got eight number one, eight number four, eight number two, and sort of just arrange them in their right order. And I take it, because I haven't opened up the instructions yet, that you start with, really, start from large bag number one, um, one of one, one of two, one of three, one of four, etc. So that's how they've organised it. Now, I don't know how this compares to the original Lego kit, but I've got a feeling it's probably a very similar setup. Now looking at these bits, um, you know what, they, I haven't played with Lego since I was a little kid and I was obsessed with Lego, I had a big collection, it was uh, the sort of thing that got added to my birthday or Christmas presents every year, so I had a large collection and you know, obviously I can't remember as far back as then but these feel like really good quality, apparently it's ABS plastic. Again, I don't know what the original Lego ones are, but th this feels good, you know, like it's a bit of a spring in there as well, but it feels strong. Th this is going to be a, a good quality build, and I dare say it's exactly the same material as the Lego one, until someone tells me differently, but um, I I'm pretty confident that it is. Right, so uh, what I plan to do now is put these bags in reverse order back into the box and keep bag number one out and then I'll split it up like I've done with this lot here and um, attempt at making a start on this. So first thing I've got to do is download the PDF onto my iPad and um, make a go of it. So let's see how we do. So uh, I've just downloaded the PDF onto my iPad and the instructions are looking pretty good. I think what my brother said was right about like you can say here it'll tell me bag one. I can expand on it and look at things in more detail. The minor side of the um, doing it as a PDF is I know with the actual manuals themselves they have a scale drawing of a part so if you open up a bag of parts and not sure which bit is the bit you're needing because they look so similar to something else you can measure it up on the actual booklet itself but it didn't seem to cause my brother any problems so I'm sure I'll be all right too. So I've opened sack number one and laid out the individual bags in their, uh, now, in their respective orders. Okay, so uh, one of the first things I've now realised is you don't start with bag number one and then move on to bag number two, number three, whatever. You open up a sack and then you've got the individual bags inside the sack and then you empty your bits into containers and now looking at it on sort of closer inspection each little bag has got a kind of a certain type of brick in it so the type of bricks that are in this bag are specific and the type of bag, uh, bricks in this bag are kind of specific these are like big chunky bricks these ones are all like little small flattish kind of bricks so the idea being is to set them all up in a nice little row so as I go by the drawing I look at what bit I need and pick out from my pot which part I need I think right that's a little bit more organized but I can see now this is going to make it harder because I thought the bags would sort of run consecutively but um, I suppose this is what makes it a bit more interesting so uh, in this instance here I can see on this part here it tells me I need one of those and one of those. Now obviously I'm not going to do a video of me connecting 9090 bits but I just want to give you an idea of how it works or how it's unravelling to me. 
So um, I'm going to crack on with that. Some of you might have noticed I've got a... Mm, there you go, yeah. My thumb is wrapped up. Last week I was actually going to do a, do a video. I'm making a headboard for my bedroom, which consists of um, 65 slats of oak running all down one wall, which I'm going to incorporate, um, incorporate lighting and um, floating um, bedside cabinets on. Anyway, while I'm in the middle of cutting it, I was videoing all this. While I was in the middle of cutting those slats of wood, I took my eye off the ball for that split second and I've taken the end of my thumb off, complete with a bit of bone, believe it or not. It's really sore, really, really sore. They've offered me plastic surgery for it, but I've refused it. Just means that I might have a bit of a weird thumb. But anyway, that don't bother me. But what does bother me is that I'm useless now. Like you don't realize how much you need your thumb. And I've managed to sort of learn how to use these two fingers as finger and thumb, as opposed to that action before. That's gonna perhaps hold me up a little bit. Anyway, just a little backstory. I'm going to crack on now. First bit done. Now I've got to find the three bits for the next part. I've got to say these bits fit together really nicely. It's made really, really well. Right. Um, I've kind of had second thoughts about doing a whole build video for this um, kit because I have spent the last two days um, getting this far with this thing. And um, so I'm kind of trying to compress that and speed it up and speed it up and it all just becomes pretty much a blur. Now, there are some other guys out there who've done whole re or whole build videos of these Lego kits and they're so good at editing. I'm rubbish at editing and you can see from the quality of my videos, I'm terrible at it. And they make it exciting and interesting whereas mine will just be just a whiz of film with some background music and they have no value to you. So instead, um, which was kind of originally what this was about, was a review of the AliExpress version of Lego as opposed to the real Lego kit. So as I say, I've got this far. The next part of this video, which will come up after this bit now, but for me in real life, it'll probably be a few weeks time, uh, will be when the boat is finished. And then just sort of a talk about and review of the whole kit and how I found it and whether I think it's value for money or not. So just to go over the first bit that I've built, this part so far consists of two out of the 15 bags. I've still got quite a few bits left from the second bag, so but it's almost finished. The, the first section of the boat is almost finished. As I say, I, I've spent a couple of days on this and I, I reckon I'm going to guess about sort of 12 hours or something like that. Nevertheless, uh, it's quite enjoyable. Oh, it really is enjoyable, in fact. You know, searching for the little bits and pieces, making a small unit and then sort of putting the whole unit onto the boat and uh, gradually watching it getting built up is quite exciting. The bits fitting in perfectly. Instructions are super, super easy to understand. And um, as you can see, I'm already getting, uh, or getting this thing to look like the front nose cone of the Titanic. There's quite a lot of detail in there as well. I see like these little cranes and things like that there and little steps and uh, railings and things like that. So quite a lot of detail on this kit. Not what you kind of expect from a Lego kit. More You'd more expect something like that from a wooden boat kit. But um, yeah, so that's where we're up to now. The next bit of film will be the finished article. Right, just a little bit of an update. Uh, kind of decided rather than show you the end product, I'll kind of sh maybe show you the the boat in its stages. Um, I spent about mm, six days on it now, a few hours each day, and I've reached this far. So, according to the instructions, I've gone as far as it wanted me to go with this nose cone. I've got some of the... Um, paneling on the side 
there got the little chains in place as well and you've even got to build up these little chains they don't come complete and then I've got this sort of front mid section which I've only just finished today and put the turret on which was hugely satisfying because it kind of made it real you can see all the little windows that I've had to build up and inside here which is really nice you can see all the decks and I don't know if that kind of makes any sense to you but these are all little rooms with the little white beds in there and there's a bathroom in there or shower room or something like that in there this one seems to have its own little pool I think it might be um, so a lot of detail which once the whole boat has gone together you're never going to see but that's what makes this such a great project that the detail that goes into it a bit like when I uh, rebuild my classic cars it, it's not what you see it's what you don't see um, which makes it such a satisfying project so I'm now at the stage where again as far as the instructions are concerned I'm kind of done with this bit for now and it's sort of saying join these two pieces together which is that way round well, that sort of clips in there like that for now just spent this morning Sunday morning building this up which is the side panel for here and I was just about to join this on somehow somehow is the uh, operative word at the moment okay that's clipped in place so there we have one side and I've just got to build that same panel and put it on this side as well so as I say this there's, there's a lot that goes on inside here which will never get seen and I suppose um, a lot of that is where this um, 10,000 and 90 pieces are going at the end of the day one of the things that I quite like about this kit is there are times when they could have made one brick to go in a certain area but instead of just you know making it as one brick they're making you build one brick out of four little bricks if you know what I mean um, which you know which you could say it's tedious but that's what makes it satisfying um, building all these little bits and pieces you literally have to build components and then drop the component into the boat somewhere with loads of little bits and pieces and then sort of shuffling around trying to find a bit and is it there is it missing or oh, god knows what and then you always find it. it does make it satisfying I mean I could easily just sit here all through the night and, and want to finish the boat all in one go but I'm trying to savour it and um, enjoy the thing rather than just sort of crashing it out which would of course be great fun but anyway um, I'll update you on the next section right I've just finished a, another section of this boat um, pretty much the same as when I was doing this section of the boat this is another similar section to that which is a continuation of the hull um, again you can see like all the little rooms inside there with their beds and whatnot and uh, I kind of in the middle of uh, the parts I've got here now move these about yeah so the parts I've got here now are the remainder of bag 8 out of 15 so uh, yeah I'm more than halfway there now I've just finished this section here and joined it on to the original section which I've just shown you and now this 
this ship is starting to take shape. You can see how huge this thing is going to be. The next stage, I think, I haven't looked forward in the instructions, but I think the next stage will be is when this part goes on to here. Now, I'm not sure how many more sections there are beyond here. But um, this is now currently measuring at 84 centimeters. So that's uh, first, second, and third sections. And I've still got uh, 130, so I've still got another 50 centimeters to go. So, yeah, we're looking at at least, I think, another two more sections like this to get to the end of the boat. But th this is vast, this is huge, um, and so much fun. It's so addictive. It's one of those projects or hobbies that you kind of never want to end because uh, I'm really enjoying this. It's just nice to be tinkering around, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to pace myself because I don't want to just rush and finish it because the the fun is in the uh, journey and not so much the destination well the you know the end result is going to be really pleasing yeah I was right um, so the next part of the instruction was to join this with these two pieces so <clears throat> here it is in uh, well it's about half of the boat or just a bit over half of the boat in lengthwise now and it's heavy yeah it's just real weight to this so I can imagine once it's all done and I'm also sort of thinking about um, putting up a shelf above here somewhere to to keep it because uh, my wife won't have it inside on display which is a shame so it's gonna have to stay out here okay back again I've now lost track of how much time I spent on it because it's been so intermittent. You know, I might spend a couple of hours one day, I might spend five hours another day. Meanwhile, I've um, pretty much completed the rear end of this boat. I'm literally on my last bag of bits and pieces and it's a lot of little details now. And then finally assemble this section onto the uh, front section. The great thing about this boat is there's a lot of hidden detail that only the builder would know because it gets hidden inside. As I mentioned before, um, you've got all the cabins, which you can see when the boat is split into the sections. One of the other things I've come across, which was only yesterday, is that you actually get to build the engines and they're working engines with pistons as well. Um, and that will eventually go somewhere in there, I think. I haven't got that far on the instructions yet. And then when the boat gets put together, you'll never get to see it. But it's very satisfying to actually be building something like this. You can see the little crankshaft and the pistons going up and down. And as I say, it, you know, it's for nobody's benefit other than the builders, to be honest. It's, um, it's almost a shame to not be able to see that. But again, very satisfying to be able to put that kind of detail into a boat like this. Just to show you, um, I popped the engines in, as you can see here, and um, when you turn the engine, you get the um, propeller spinning, as you can see there. There's a whole um, prop shaft which I built up inside there, which connects to the engines. It's just another one of those little details which um, makes this such a great kit. So I'm going to crack on now. I think I've got about an hour, maybe two hours worth of um, finishing off on this boat. And then um, finally get to show you the finished article and tell you what I think. So I finally finished the boat. The hours which turned into days and then weeks all accumulated and ended up as this one beautiful project.
it was an absolute pleasure building this kit. Really, really enjoyed it. I'm almost sad that it's finished because I quite enjoyed coming out here into my little room and uh, with a cup of coffee and the TV on in the background and tinkering away quietly and you know after each hour you could see the progression you're seeing this thing grow before your very eyes so what's my final verdict well you guys already know um, I'm in love with the Aliexpress version for those of you who can't afford to go and spend the hundreds of pounds for a Lego Titanic the Aliexpress one is great and I'd love to see a real Lego Titanic sat next to this and challenge anyone to see if they can tell the difference between the two because I bet they can't. So that's the end of this video. I hope you guys got some value from it and I hope it helps you decide whether you want to go for an Aliexpress kit. Highly recommend it as I say and um, thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon sometime with a new project.